This is a perfect guide for using Loiverse API with Postman. If you are not using Postman, you will still be able to get a hint for your development through this video. This video contains how to authorize access to API by Access Token and OAuth 2.0, how to get an item list from API, and how to create an item and receipt. Let's start. First, you can download the Postman collection from the API documentation. When you import it to Postman, you will see the set of example requests that you can use for Loiverse API. Go to the Authorization tab and select Bearer Token. You can get the Bearer Token, in other words, the Access Token, from the Loiverse back office. Please note that only the account owner can generate and get the token from the back office. This is the access token. Go back to Postman and paste the token there. Next, you need to set up the environment for Loibers. For this, please set up variables, base URL, and its value https colon slash slash appy.loibers.com slash b1.0 you can copy and paste from the api documentation now postman is ready to get any data from loibers let's try getting a list of items You can also get a list of receipts. For professional purposes of use, I recommend using OAuth 2.0 rather than an access token, because it is more secure. In the authorization page, select OAuth 2.0 type. Give a name to the token. Now, please go to the Loiverse Developer Portal and click Add App. In the Redirect URL, please copy the Callback URL from Postman. Copy App ID and App Secret from Loiverse to Client ID and Client Secret in Postman. Copy the access token URL from the API documentation. For the auth URL, I prepared a template that includes all the access rights. You can download the auth URL template from the description. Please update the client ID, scope of access, redirect URL, and state when you use it for your application. I update the client ID to the new one that I created just now. Finally, select Send Client Credentials in Body in Client Authentication menu. Log in with the user's credentials. Now Postman got an access to the Loiverse data of the account. Let's check. I can get a list of categories and customers for example. Now we are heading to the difficult part. Creating an item and creating a receipt. Let's create an item from Postman. When creating an item, you need to go to the Body tab and input item information there. In the Loiverse Postman collection, there are all the preset parameters of an item. So if you want to create an item, you can input each parameter and delete unnecessary parameters. We don't need ID, handle, and reference ID because they will be automatically generated. 
The item ID will be used only when you want to update an existing item in Loiverse. Let's give a name to this item. If you want to assign this item to a category, you need to get a category ID by getting a list of categories. Track stock as true, sold by weight as false. We don't need to create a composite item here because it is too complicated. Therefore, we can delete the components because it is required only when the item is a composite item. Now we gonna get a list of suppliers to find a supplier ID. In the same way. We get a list of taxes to get a tax ID of a tax which will be applied to the item by default. You can also add modifier IDs if you wish. But let's skip it for now. Option name is required when you create an item with variants. An example of an option name is the color of the t-shirts and the size of the shoes. The colors such as blue, red, yellow, or sizes S, M, and L should be specified in the option value under the variance array. Created at updated at and deleted at parameters can be deleted because they will be automatically generated. We can also delete the option name parameter because we are not going to create an item with variance. Meanwhile, even though this item doesn't have a variant, in the API logic, it is considered that it has one variant. Therefore, we need to input at least one variant information. We delete variant ID, item ID, and reference variant ID because it will be automatically generated. We delete option values because we don't create items with variants. Put default pricing time equal to fixed, and the default price is 100. From here we go to the store array, where you can set up an item for each store. You can set up different price and number of stock of the item if you want. First. We need to get each store ID. Of course, we can get it by get a list of stores, but this time I will show you another way of getting a store ID. When you open a store in the back office, you can find the store ID in the URL. Let's set up pricing and stock information for each store. Again, the created at, updated at, and deleted at parameters can be deleted because they will be automatically generated. Now you see the template for the next variant, but we will delete it. Now everything is ready. Let's create this item by clicking send. Here in the back office, we can see the item, Postman Perfect, was created. Next, let's try creating a new receipt. Go to Post Create a Receipt, and the Body tab. Here, you will see a place to input the store ID and item list. In the line item, you would need to input quantity, price, cost of the item, and tax and discount to be applied. You can actually input different price and cost of the item from its default. Get a store ID from the back office. Get the variant ID from where I created the new item just now.
get a tax ID and a discount ID from another template and delete unnecessary rows. Until here as one item. Let's post only one item and delete the other item line. After adding all item information, you need to describe how the payment of the receipt is done. Payment ID can be taken from the back office as well. Let's pay in cash. These payment details can be used when you have connected with other payment systems. There is a second payment type line for the cases when the payment was split. Basically, creating a receipt is done at this point. Then I will start debugging this body. Price and cost should be numbers, not strings. Now I finished debugging. Let's send this receipt to Loivers. It is done like this and the same receipt can be found on my Loivers account. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions about Loivers API, please write them in the comments. I will try to answer it as much as possible. You can also book my free consultation from the link in the description or this QR code. Have a good coding life.